Hi, I'm Maria Thea Harris, or Velo Sews, and welcome back to Sew Over 50 podcast. Stay listening. Sew Organised Style podcast acknowledges traditional owners of country throughout Australia. We pay our respects to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures and to the elders past, present and emerging. Thanks for joining us for another great Sew Over 50 podcast. Shalinan or Sea Sews is the longtime Bay Area sewist organiser. Her sewing blog is seasews.com. I'm a longtime follower of her work and today we meet for the first time. Shalinan is a Sew Over 50 follower and we chat about the work that she's done and continues to do for the sewing community. Welcome Shalina to Sober 50's podcast on Sew Organized Style. Thank you so much for having me. It's really a pleasure to be here. I've followed you for quite some time through your blog and I think it's wonderful that we can actually meet via Zoom for the podcast today. Yes, wow, the beauty of virtual meetings. <laughs> for listeners who haven't discovered you as yet, tell us how we can follow you online. Well, I have a sewing blog csows.com so just the letter c and then sows the nest.com and people can follow my blog there i don't know some people might use a feed or something to to follow a, a blog but you know people can follow it that way or i also have a newsletter you can sign up for that on my blog there's either a pop-up window that comes up and there's also a sign up on the sidebar and i also am on instagram at csows and uh, I have a Facebook page, which I post to occasionally. I, yeah, I started my blog, it'll be 10 years ago, this coming November. The exact date was November 11th, 2011, which I chose because I, it would be a memorable date because it's 11, 11, 11. It is. And it's kind of funny because I, I began it as just the way to learn WordPress. And I really didn't expect to be blogging, you know, 10 years later. It was really just a way to get to know WordPress and decided to blog about sewing because it's something that I enjoyed. That's how it began. So did you have to learn WordPress for work? Well, what happened is that I worked for a publication that did not have a very good website. They didn't really have much of a content management system. And so then I decided, well, okay, I really need to, to learn a content management system. And so that's why I decided, well, okay, let me just start with WordPress because people say it should be fairly easy to learn. It wasn't that easy, but uh, I figured it out. <laughs> and that's how I got started. Oh, good. You've told us where we can find you. So give us a bit more background about who you are. Who I am? Uh, that's a big question. So I'm going to answer in the context of sewing. Okay. I'm a sewist and I love fabric and sewing clothes. I really love the creative process of choosing fabrics and sewing patterns I like to sew garments mostly for myself. I've made a lot of tops and skirts and some dresses and pants or trousers, as you like to call them. <laughs> uh, I don't stick to any particular era. You know, like some people just sew vintage, you know, historical garments. But I sew a bit of everything. I've sewn patterns from Japanese sewing books, indie patterns, vintage patterns, Alabama chain in patterns, and the big four. So I always say that my style is eclectic it's inclusive of all eras yes <laughs> yeah I don't stick to any particular era I just so what I like I guess is kind of how I would describe it and do you do any mending as well yeah occasionally though I haven't done like what you know people talk about visible mending and I haven't really done much of that mainly because actually I haven't had things really wear out to that degree yet I just thought I'd ask because we, mm -hmm. we have a regular mending, a few mending and sewing save podcasts. <laughs> I've seen you on Instagram and on your blog where you talk about the Bay Area sewists. So can you tell us about them? Sure. The Bay Area sewist is a meetup group. And if you aren't familiar with meetup, it's a platform where you can organize meetups virtually or in person. I mean, it started out as being an in-person platform where people would organize meetups to meet doing a variety of things. But since the pandemic, obviously, a lot of people are meeting virtually. So I've been the organizer for the group since 2014. Been organizing monthly meetups for the Bay Area. So it's since then. 
and it got started back in 2012 by another selling blogger, Megan Hunt. She blogs at Made by Megs. And I had actually joined the group in the fall of 2013, but they hadn't been meeting up. And so I never actually attended a meetup that she had organized. And then I got a notice that the group was going to dissolve unless someone else stepped up as the organizer because she was deciding that she wasn't going to do it anymore. So I think at the time I got the second or third notice about it dissolving, I thought, well, gee, maybe I could do it, you know, because I thought, well, it'd be a shame to let it go away because there were lots of members that were already there. So I decided to do it. And it's a regional group. We've got members from all over the Bay Area, which is in Northern California. So people in the North Bay, like a city like Novato, and then San Francisco, Berkeley, which is where I live, Oakland, and all the way down south to San Jose. So it's a pretty wide range geographically. So for people who aren't familiar with the Bay Area, we're talking about 48 miles or so from like San Francisco to San Jose, or 77 kilometers for those of you who are metric. <laughs> Before the pandemic, we met in person and I had organized by then more than 65 meetups. And they were like fabric swaps, pattern swaps, meetups where we learned about maybe sewing techniques or different types of fabric. Like we meet up at a fabric store and they would have someone doing a presentation about um, certain types of fabric. And I would also get meetup ideas from some of the members too. Like one time we met up at a museum where there was a fashion exhibit. And then we started our Frocktails, uh, annual Frocktails event in 2017 and inspired by Frocktails in Australia. The last one we did was in February 2020. And then we didn't do it this year because of the pandemic. So now we've been meeting up via Zoom. And what's interesting about that is that now we get people from other parts of the country in the United States who are attending. Like there are some members who left who were members of the Bay Area Soros and they moved out of uh, California and all living on the East Coast. Right. So some of those people have been attending. So it's been great to see some familiar faces. Um, then we've had other people from Texas uh, attending because there is a meetup group there called So and Tell in Texas. And some of them um, have been attending our meetups. You know, we'll probably continue to meet virtually for the rest of the year. So other people are certainly welcome to come. It's free to join meetup. You just have to go to meetup.com and then you search for Bay Area SOAS. Then you can find the group. One of the benefits is uh, Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics. They give us a 20% discount on our meetup days on most of them, not all of them, but most of them. So it's, it's really great that they offer that for us. Uh, we've also had other meetups. We've had like Catherine Nolan, who is the social media manager and buyer at Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics. And on Instagram, she's at Thread Snips. She's talked to our group about fabric, fabric weights, and some indie patterns that the store carries. Jennifer Sir of the Sewing Room in Alameda and Erica Harrington of Needle Studio in the South Bay. They've spoken to the group about their businesses. I've invited guest speakers uh, and I'm try trying to also support local businesses. And so they've come to speak to the group. Sewing Room and Needle Studio, they offer sewing classes and they also sell fabric and patterns and Brightex Fabrics talked to us earlier this year about some of the new fabrics in the store and how their business has been going during the pandemic. And then we have a sewing instructor, garment sewing instructor, Beth Galvin. She's spoken to the group about choosing the right fabric for your patterns. And she's going to be talking again to the group in June about fitting tips for wrap dresses. And she teaches garment sewing classes at Hello Stitch in Berkeley. And then later this month, um, Sonia Phillip is going to be talking to the group about her new sewing book, which just came out, um, The Act of Sewing. Um, that was just released by Moost Books. Well, her Instagram account is pretty colorful and fun. It's at Sonia Phillip. That's S-O-N-Y-A-P-H-I-L-I-P. -I, I mean, you've talked about so many people and businesses that I've heard of, it's great to hear that Bay Area Sellers has had access to those people as being part of the meetup group. Yeah, it's been great. They've, you know, we've had some meetups actually at those businesses in person. <laughs> we've had meetups at Bytex Fabrics. We've had meetups at 
the sewing room and at Hello Stitch. So those are all places where we've had meetups and we had a meetup a long time ago at Stone Mountain and Daughter. And they've also had Stone Mountain and Daughter come speak to the group like at a different location because there's not like a huge space. Uh, we've, we've also had them come, you know, speak to us in another location. But yeah, we've had meetups in their store too. Well, you definitely live in a very good area for sewing. Sounds very inviting. So is sewing your main craft? Yeah, sewing, I would say, is my main craft. I mean, I mostly sew clothes, but I've also made some hats on my sewing machine and by hand. You know, several years ago, I I drafted a few versions of a six-section cap to make a newsboy cap for my and a a beret for my husband. And then I made some for myself, too, because some of them, I was just experimenting, you know, with the pattern. And so I made some that would fit my head and some that fit his, you know, and then it was playing around the angle of the cap. And I've taken a few millinery classes, learning about making feathered ornaments for hats, covering a hat form with fabric, sculpting lace for a hat, and wet shaping buckram, which is that stiff material that's used inside hats. Those were fun classes to take. And I also collect hats and I have a lot of vintage hats in my collection. On my blog, you most of the photos you see when I'm wearing something, I'm usually wearing a hat in the photos. And I, I did try counting my hats last year, taking a photo a day. It was sort of a pandemic exercise. And yeah. for a while I was posting them on Instagram, but then I kind of got bored of taking selfies. I don't know. It's, it's like after a certain point, you're kind of like, uh, okay, I don't want to do this anymore. I did get up to about 80. So at least now I know I have, okay, I have more than 80 hats. <laughs> That's what I discovered. You got bored at 80 hats at 80. Yeah, there was, cause there were more, but it's like, oh, okay, I just don't want to take any more photos, you know. Okay. So does this mean you have a fabric stash for clothes and a hat making stash for your hats? I would say I have a hat collection, but in terms of like the, hat making materials I don't have much of that Mm -hmm. yeah so it's not like a stash for hat making let's put it that way but there are just a lot of hats a lot of finished products that you're proud of yes yeah well I you know I haven't made that many hats so most of my hats are like they're either vintage or stuff that I've bought or stuff that people have given me I'm impressed recently one of the things that you've done for the sewing community is you have updated your sewing pattern height chart yes Why did you develop a sewing pattern height chart in the first place? I started it in 2017. In that time, I had made the Mimosa culottes by Named Clothing. That's the Finnish indie pattern company. And I saw online that they actually had a size chart. And I saw, oh, this is interesting. They designed for height of 172 centimeters or 5 foot 8. And I'm about 170 centimeters, 5 foot 7. So that height was actually good for me because it, you know, though it might be too tall for other people or short, depending on how tall you are. Right. And so then I got curious about what height other pattern companies designed for. I thought, Oh, this is really interesting. So yeah, I looked and saw that, okay, the big four McCall's Vogue, Butterick and Simplicity, they all designed for about five foot five, five foot six, 165 to 168 centimeters. Other companies, they design for different heights based on the fit model they're using. You know, so some indie companies, the fit model may be the actual designer. For other companies, it's the person who they use to, you know, check the fit of their design, and then they grade up or down from there. So I started looking and just, I thought, oh, maybe I'll just make a chart, you know? So then I said, okay, let me list the height and the cup size for these different companies. And then I would, then I, tried to find like the size chart on their websites. Um, and I would link to that for each company. And also discovered that some companies don't list the height that they design for. And so I would contact them. Okay. What height do you design for? You know, and most everybody responded. So it was, that was pretty cool that people would respond. And I, I initially started with just companies whose patterns I made. And then I started adding companies that other people suggested to me or that I knew of, you know, through other sources. And sometimes people would, you know, they commented in the comments on the blog post or some of them got suggestions via Instagram. And then 
last year I did an update where I just, you know, added more companies. And then in February of this year, I did a, a huge update because I, I went through the entire chart and I updated all the links to the size charts because a lot of the size charts, the, the links changed for the big four because now all the companies are now owned by a British company. So none of those links actually worked anymore. So I updated all of those. And then a lot of the indie companies now have expanded size ranges. That's, so I thought, oh, well, this is a lot more information. And, and then there's different size charts. And some people don't have expanded sizes for all their patterns. So I thought, okay, well, let me add a new column of information. So then I added a column for the size ranges. But then it's a little complicated because, like I said, not everybody has expanded sizes for all their patterns. So then they have all these asterisks in that <laughs> section of the chart. And then so underneath that, the asterisks for the companies explain that they're working on expanding their size range. And some of them intend to expand all of them. And some of them just will start with the current patterns that they're doing are not in the expanded sizes. So there's explanations for all that in there. So that's kind of how it got started. And then it, I guess I've kind of committed myself to continuing to work on it and update it <laughs> as it goes along. And probably next year, I'll probably add a new column of information. The fact that you've developed it in 2017 and you've continued to keep it updated to now and that you've committed to keep it updated in the future, that's a really great service to the sewing community. Thanks. Yeah, I mean, it was great that um, so over 50 highlighted in the Instagram because I think a lot of people got to find it and got a lot more comments on the blog post. Are you getting more traffic to the size chart again? Yeah, definitely. From the the recent update, definitely got a lot lot of traffic. It means the work that you've done is being appreciated. Yeah, yeah. it's it's good because, you know, it was a lot of time, a lot of time and effort to put it together and to keep updating it. So when did you discover Sober 50? I'm not exactly sure, but I think I started noticing the hashtag probably sometime last year. And then that led me to the Instagram account, um, which is really great. I mean, I love seeing what other sewers are making. There's a lot of fun challenges that are highlighted there, especially like that pattern mixing one. And yeah, yeah, and the highlights of the sewing details. I love seeing the details of people's garments, you know, like the piping or the button and yeah, it's, it's really inspiring to see what people are doing. Yeah, and there's so much great information. I mean, I'm just amazed at how much time and effort goes into the Instagram account, not only just the post. So I appreciate that. It's great that they do a lot of tutorials about how to use Instagram so that at least we can find more information to help us with our sewing. Yeah, and you know, highlighting so many other people and what they're doing and tips and you know I think that that's that's really helpful too it's a great sewing community just sharing information when the bay area sewers meet virtually do you discuss the sewing communities that are online as well we haven't talked about online sewing communities I think most of the meetups have been either we've had guest speakers or we have just talked amongst ourselves, like book. sometimes we break up into small groups and we do show and tell or we discuss patterns, it's those kinds of things. What final thoughts would you like to leave our listeners about sewing and also the Sew Over 50 community? Well, thank you so much for sharing so much inspiring content and for putting so much time and effort into highlighting a really talented and creative sewing community. Keep inspiring us and sharing information. And so again, how can people find the Bay Area Sewers? They can go to meetup.com and search for Bay Area Sewers, or you can go to the exact address. The URL would be meetup.com forward slash Bay hyphen area hyphen Sewers. Thank you again for being on Sewer 50's podcast on Sew Organized Style. Great. Well, thank you for having me. Yay. Yay. And have a lovely day, listeners. This episode of Soul Organised Style Podcast was produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, with permission of Shaleen and sound by bensound.com. You can subscribe to Soul Organised Style Podcast, but with an S, not a Z, on all good podcast apps and give us a five-star rating and review. 
make sure you listen to over 50 Sober 50 podcasts that we've now published. Post any questions or suggestions you have on our Instagram account at style or on our website at www.soulorganisedstylepodcast.com or on our Facebook page. We look forward to joining you in your sewing room next time. Stay safe, everyone.